Designed for recreational paddlers and anglers to use in calm water, Perception's Pescador sit-on-top kayak is priced at $569, making it an entry-level kayak. But it claims the features and the performance of a mid-range kayak. Now, is that too good to be true? I'll be the judge of that as I take it out for a complete test. So let's get into it. The Perception Pescador retails for $569 US dollars. It's 10 feet, six inches long. It has a width of 32 inches. Its weight is 57 pounds and it has a capacity of 325 pounds. It's primarily designed for calm water and slow rivers. Now let's take a look at some of the key features. The Pescador has a large tank well with bungees, two molded in rod holders, paddle holders, an adjustable seat back, a thick ventilated padded seat, a solo mount recess for ram accessories, foot pegs, gear tracks around the deck for accessories like rod holders, GPS or camera mounts, a hatch with quick handle locks, and four molded in handles, one on each end and one on each side for easy carrying and to make it lockable. Now, Perception claims that the Pescador is the best all-round kayak for the money and that it's unmatched in stability, uh, speed, and tracking. Now, that's a bold claim, and I'm going to put it to the test. In fact, right now, I'm going to take this boat on the water and go for a good long test paddle and tell you what I think. But before I do that, please, if you haven't already, subscribe to Paddle TV and hit the notification bell because we have lots more paddling tips, gear reviews, and paddling adventures coming your way. I also want to send a quick shout out to Cali Case for sponsoring this episode. Now, Cali Case is more than just a, a waterproof phone case. It really is complete peace of mind knowing that your phone is fully protected when you're on the water. Not only is it waterproof and padded on both sides, but it floats and it lets you take photos and videos underwater. You can check it out at calicase.com. All right, I'm going to get changed and hit the water. Well, I've had a good chance to paddle this boat now. I've been going for over an hour, um, a little longer than I was expecting to go for, but it, uh, it's been nice to, to feel it out. I mean, the question really is, does this boat do what they claim? Is it the best all round recreational kayak for the money? Does it have unmatched stability, speed, and tracking ability? So let me start by talking about um, maybe one of the limiting factors as I do this review. I am six foot two, I'm 200 pounds. I'm definitely on the bigger side for this boat. Uh, my weight isn't that much of an issue, but my length is. The foot pegs are all the way as far as they can go and it's pretty much perfect there's no room for error. Actually, one foot peg is a little bit longer than the other one. I can tell because I'm right at the end. So uh, uh, any taller than me, it would be a no-go. I wouldn't recommend this for a six foot two, uh, 200 pound person. I would probably recommend this boat for someone up to, you know, six foot, six foot, six foot one tops. Um, my weight isn't that much of an issue though. I, I think you could be a bit heavier and still get away with this boat. But that's where the Pescador, I think it's the, the next size up, the 12.6 or the 12.0, sorry, the Pescador 12.0 is the, the larger version. That would be the boat for me. So I'm looking forward to trying that boat. But in this case, I'm not. I'm trying this boat. And so I'm going to do a review about this boat. <laughs> but knowing that I'm on the bigger side of this boat, um, here's what I can tell you about, uh, let's start with stability. Is it a stable boat? Yes, 
it's a rec kayak, it's stable. Is it, does it have unmatched stability? No. This boat for me, the bottom is kind of round. It's, it's what we sometimes is called a displacement hull and it's not a flat hull and that gives the boat more the ability to roll from edge to edge better but it feels less stable just sitting there. Uh, that being said, it's stable. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying this thing isn't stable. It's a stable boat, but does it have unmatched stability? No, I think that's a bit, a bit of a stretch. So now speed, how is this thing for speed? Uh, does it have unmatched speed? Well, I'll tell you what, for a 10 foot recreational kayak, this thing's pretty fast. You know, it's not gonna win any races against 12 to 15 you know, touring uh, recreational kayaks, but as a general recreational kayak, an entry level recreational kayak, it's a fast boat, you know, I like it. So for its class, does it have unmatched speed? Well, you know, I could be convinced, I need to try a few more entry level boats, but I could be convinced. Uh, tracking ability. Now this thing doesn't have a rudder, it doesn't have a skeg, it doesn't have anything extra to keep it going in a straight line. So how well does it track for a 10 foot kayak? Does it wanna just keep turn, turning on me? No, it actually tracks very well. I'm really impressed. You know, it strikes a, a great balance between tracking and maneuverability. It does turn very easily as well. For a 10 foot kayak, I think, you know, it's, it's a very nice design. Uh, I really don't have anything bad to say about it. And so now let's talk about overall value. I mean, they say that this kayak is the best bang for the buck um, for an all round kayak. And I have to say, I have trouble disagreeing with that. Now, I haven't tried every entry level kayak, kayak in this class, but what I can tell you that for $569, the value you get with this kayak, everything from the features and the performance, I mean, you it's exceptional value. You can't go wrong with this thing. Is it the perfect kayak for, uh, for you. I mean, that really depends on what you're looking for, what you're looking to do. This is a great boat for just getting on the water, uh, going for a paddle. It's fast enough that you can cover a little bit of distance, but you're not gonna go huge distances in this boat. It's, uh, it's a great boat for fishing. You know, with the, it's got the features you need for it to be a fishing boat. The, the uh, built-in rod holders, the gear tracks so you can customize, put got rod holders in the front. You got a hatch so you have storage, the tank well back here to put a, a, a crate with all your fishing supplies. You know, it, it's, it's got what you need, absolutely, to be a solid fishing boat. And again, for $569, you know, you really can't go wrong there. How does it compare to a mid-range kayak? Well, I have no problem saying that, you know, it's definitely, it falls short of a mid-range kayak. And I'm not gonna go into big detail about what the differences are in this video, because this will become a very long video. It already, already is, but uh, uh, I'm gonna do another video about that. So, <laughs> so look for the video about the difference between entry level and mid-range kayaks. And when I say mid-range kayaks, I'm really talking about kayaks in the $900, $1,000 range. They have definitely a lot more features. And I think probably the biggest thing is comfort. My butt hurts. This isn't a comfortable seat. It's an okay seat, but it's not comfortable. So anyway, great first impression. I'm gonna um, keep making my way back to the launch and um, Talk to you in a bit. All right, some final thoughts on the Perception Pescador, at least the 10.0. Uh, I think there's a lot that carries over to the 12.0 as well. Um, the 12.0 will be a better boat for me. It's gonna be, it's a bigger boat. It's designed for bigger people. That's gonna be the boat for me. Um, but that aside, uh, for 569 bucks, I mean, it really is exceptional value. I thought about it some more and, and yeah, you're, you're gonna be really hard pressed to do much better. Um, so it's definitely worth a try. 
give this boat a give this boat a try if you're into calm water paddling. You just you're not trying to do any major distances. Um, you want an entry level kayak that for calm water and that you can fish out of. And you know you could use some serious fishing out of this thing too. It is a bit of a fishing machine. Eventually, if you're really into fishing, you're probably going to end up getting into a more specialized fishing kayak. But this will take you a long way. Now. For me, it's not my type of kayak, and I think the biggest reason is comfort. You know, I'm a sucker for comfort these days, <laughs> and every year I, it becomes more and more important to me. And that's one of the things you give up um, for an entry-level kayak. They just can't make this thing as comfortable as a mid-range kayak that has a, a separate seat with a high seating position, so your butt's not wet, and it's much more comfortable. I mean. To be quite honest, my butt shouldn't feel the way it's feeling right, right now. Um, but I just, I have been on the water for two hours and that's about the limit that I can take uh, in this kayak. Maybe I just have a bony butt, but. Um, anyway, great value. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this gear review. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already and stay tuned because we have a ton more gear reviews, tips, paddling adventures coming your way. Let me know in the comment box uh, below if you, what your thoughts on this boat or if there's any other boat that you'd like to see, uh, see me review because gosh, there's a lot of boats out there to choose from and uh, I'd love to know what you guys want to see. So thanks for watching. <laughs>